this is the hardest video that I've ever filmed and probably ever will film. I never get nervous to film anything and now I'm just like terrified for some reason. I can't even think what I want to say and I've thought about this so so much. A lot of you will probably be viewers and subscribers of my channel already but if you have found me just from clicking on this video or from, from searching for this topic then my name is Emma. I normally make fashion, lifestyle, travel content but today I am talking about something very different. Today after a very very long time of silence I'm going to be sharing my story of sexual abuse. I want to quickly thank two people. Firstly my boyfriend Dylan for being so supportive of me not just through our whole relationship but particularly over the past few months that I've been going to therapy and it's been really tough and secondly to my therapist if she's watching therapy changed my life so thank you for helping me to finally confront this and speak about it and for all the preparation that we've done for this video. I am taking a huge personal risk in posting this video and I am terrified at putting this out there but if me taking that plunge can help even just one person going through this then it is worth it. One of my favourite quotes is by Emma Watson and she said if not me who if not now when and that just resonated with me so much. Before I start with my story I want to tell you why I'm making this video and why I'm making it now after all of this time because this is not something that happened to me like last week this is something that happened to me a long time ago but it has taken me this long to come to terms with it and it was never ever ever something that I wanted to share but here we are something changed this year when I started going to therapy and I think becoming a content creator and having my own platform and my own voice made me change my mind and made me want to share the story because before that my whole life I honestly always thought that I would carry this to the grave. This month April is sexual assault awareness month and my aim in sharing my story is to help other victims and survivors in their journey to healing. I hope that this video and this story can show others that you are not alone in what you're going through, that it's never too late to speak out if you want to and that you can and you will survive this. My story above all is a story of survival like when I think about myself and like everything I've been through it makes me so emotional because I'm like I'm such a survivor. You will see and hear from my story that I have transformed my life and myself a lot from a place of literally rock bottom to where I am now which where I am now I think is a pretty good place I've still got a lot of work to do but I've come such a long way and I want you to know that you can do the same. I'm probably never going to say that I've overcome this or that you will overcome it because honestly that would be a lie. It's something that you deal with and you live with every day and healing, healing anything is not a linear journey so there's always going to be ups and downs and even when you th might think that you've healed from it, it might still affect you. I just want to emphasise, even though I shouldn't have to justify 
sharing my story, my own story, but I want to emphasise that I'm not trying to make this video to gain any kind of attention or sympathy. That belief is a huge stigma that surrounds victims of sexual assault and it is something that stops so many people from coming forward, myself included. I can't stress enough how difficult it is for survivors to talk about their story and to talk about what happened to them to anyone. If you see someone sharing their story, whether it is online or in real life, please try to understand that that is a huge deal for them and please be supportive of the fact that it is so difficult even just to speak about. Also, I felt the need to say this video is not to cause any drama. I will not be revealing the identity of my abuser because that's my choice and I personally don't want to go through the whole process of trying to get justice from a system that typically oppresses us as women and doesn't encourage justice at all. That's my personal choice but I fully support anyone who wants to go through that process in like pressing charges and building a case etc but that it's just not something that I want to go through. That said, I imagine that this video will get a lot of clicks and a lot of attention but I hope that I can direct that attention in the right places. So I'm going to leave links to a lot of resources and places where you can find help and support if you need it in the description box. You can also message me anytime on my social media. I'm not a therapist, I'm not a professional but I'll be really happy to help anyone who's struggling and who doesn't have anyone to talk to because I know how that feels. In making this video I want to help to combat that stigma and to show you that sexual assault can and does happen to so so many people no matter who they are. It happens more than you think and there's no model of what a sexual assault victim looks like. Like my whole point, you guys follow and see my life online and you probably never would have suspected from that image that I have been going through something like this and that's exactly my point. Prior to filming this video I have always lived in silence. I've never shared my story. There are only five people in the world who know about this. They were all just boys, like the two boys in my story time videos um, and then I've had three boyfriends so that's five but I don't even know if all of them remember because it wasn't something that we like really talked about. I just sort of mentioned it over message or like I insinuated that something had happened to me but I was never able to like really talk about it so but this year I decided to finally seek help and I started going to therapy at the start of 2022 the past few months of going through therapy have been really really difficult therapy has changed my life and it has helped me in my healing so much but it has also been so so hard because when you have therapy for a post-traumatic event you write what's called a trauma story so we had to write my story and went through the whole process of writing it all the details and afterwards I had to read it out loud several times with my therapist I said it out loud for the very first time in my life after so so many years of silence and I'm about to say it again but to the whole world um, I was sexually abused between the ages of 9 and 15. In discussing everything with my therapist I came to realise we came to realise 
that I had been groomed to be sexually abused and that as a result of what happened to me and the significant traumas that I went through I suffer from PTSD, anxiety and depression also things that I've never really said out loud to give you guys some background info without going into too much detail about my upbringing and my childhood I have a pretty complicated and pretty messy unconventional family situation I definitely didn't grow up in your stereotypical family environment I actually grew up in quite a rough area and I grew up around a lot of crime and it's just something that I've really tried to separate myself from. I always knew that I didn't really fit in that environment. I don't want that. I don't want to live that life. I have worked since I have been able to work. I've gone out and earned money and I've worked throughout my whole education. I've never stopped because I knew that I wanted to work and get a different life. Yeah, I think growing up in a very unstable family environment and growing up around crime and domestic violence and emotional abuse and a lot of stuff I won't get into in this video, that whole environment definitely made me a vulnerable target for abusers. Another thing that therapy made me realise is that this trauma has actually affected every aspect of my life. My anxiety and depression was a lot more severe than it is now. So high school for me was a bit of a blur. I absolutely hated it. As you can tell from the ages that I told you guys, the bulk of what happened to me happened while I was in high school. Because I think in England we start high school when we're 11, if I remember rightly, so yeah. I really struggled with fitting in in high school, I moved around in a lot of different friendship groups. I have briefly mentioned bullying on my channel before. I don't want to go into all that in this video because I'm trying to focus on, on this one theme. But yeah, I just found it so hard hiding all of these secrets and having to constantly pretend to be someone that I wasn't and having to hide what was really happening and how I was really feeling and sometimes as a YouTuber I feel that way when I pick up the camera I have to be really happy and in pictures you know I have to look good like no one's gonna want to watch content where I'm depressed but I think that's why it's important that people are more open about this because so many people go through it and yet most of us just pretend that we don't because we carry on trying to maintain this like public image and then after high school I went to college or sixth form if you're from outside the UK um, and at college it was pretty bad as well it was better than high school I liked it more than high school I remember at college the timetables were a lot more flexible, it wasn't like a 9 to, f nine to 3 day at school so some days I would have a class in the morning and I'd be finished at lunchtime and I would often go home and just go to my room and I had these blackout curtains I'd just shut the curtains and I'd just sit in my bed and I would just cry for hours or even for the whole day sometimes to be completely transparent i have had a lot of dark periods of self-harm and just not wanting to be here anymore not now not recently i mean in the past um looking back i wish that i had spoken out back then at least to someone because now that I have, now that I have told my therapist, I've told my boyfriend, doing that lifts some of the weight from your shoulders because carrying something like this alone, especially for such a long time, like me for 
like over 10 years just by myself battling this it's such a heavy weight and it has nearly killed me and knowing what I know now I wish I had shared some of that weight with someone when I was at one of the lowest points in my life I remember this moment distinctly and I wanted to put it in the video on the off chance that this person is watching um, this girl from my Spanish class started talking to me on the bus home and she actually invited me to her 18th birthday party I remember it very well because no one ever invited me anywhere and I'd actually never been to a party before I was literally 18, I'd never been to a party um, I never wore heels, I never really wore a dress, I never drank and I did all of those things for the first time I don't know if she felt sorry for me or if she just wanted more numbers for her party or whatever or if she just actually just liked me from what she saw which wasn't much because I wasn't very social as I said but yeah I went I bought a dress I bought heels I drank for the first time I even made friends I met some boys the rest is history yeah I wanted to mention that because it's just proof that like small acts of kindness are so so important so yeah if you think something nice about someone say it if you want to give a small act of kindness like inviting someone to a party or you know giving someone a little something that might make their day better like you never know what someone's going through and I just always think of that example because it was like such a small thing and she literally might have thought nothing of it but it was like a big deal to me I think when you've been through something so traumatic there is definitely a tendency to feel like you are stuck in that place and you are weighed down by what happened to you you feel like you you are what happened to you but you are so so much more than that for example instead of saying I am a victim you can flip that to say I am a survivor I used to be so so depressed about what had happened to me and I always thought my past was going to hold me back forever and stop me and I just thought what had happened to me defined me but now I recognise that yes my trauma is a part of me and it has made me who I am but it's not who I am like I'm so much more than what has happened to me and so much more than a victim of sexual assault. I also try and view the positives a lot which my therapist taught me to do as well um, and I encourage you to try and do the same. So for example as a result of this trauma I have become such a strong and resilient person. I just have this sheer determination which separates me from a lot of people because it's such a strong strong determination to get what I want in life to create the life that I want and I think that stems from the hard times that I've had so if you're still watching if you made it this far that is a very very brief outline of my journey I left out any graphic details or anything that might be triggering for other survivors watching but I hope that in hearing my story or even just in the act of me sharing this I hope that inspires you and it helps you realise that you are not alone there are so so many survivors in the world a lot of them do not speak out and come forward so there's even more than you think so you are never ever alone and the number one thing I want people to take away is that none of this is your fault in any way no matter what you were wearing what you look like what you were doing what you said what you didn't say consent is a very simple concept sexual assault is sexual assault and it comes in so many different forms just please know that whatever happened to you your experience is so valid and you deserve to be heard and believed yeah I hope you can end this video on a bit of a positive note in sort of seeing how 
I've turned my life around a bit and how I'm turning it around consistently. It is a constant process but I hope that you can see that and can realise that you can absolutely do the same and you deserve to live a better life and to build a better future for yourself after what's happened to you. This video might have been a bit rambly because I had a lot to say and I didn't really know how to say it or in what order to say it but I hope that it comes across how I want it to come across and I hope that it's well received because I'm really really scared to post it. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, please do give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment if you can, if you can think of what to say because I know it's difficult. Um, but any sort of engagement on the video will help to push this out to more people and potentially out to more survivors so more people get to hear this and see this which I think is really really important for this particular topic so yeah thank you for watching and I will see you all in a video soon bye